The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents... This is your FBI. This is your FBI. The official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Since the Equitable Life Assurance Society was founded 90 years ago, this country has changed in many ways. But in one respect, it is still the same. In those early days, people always spoke of America as the land of opportunity. Well, it still is the land of opportunity just as much as ever. In just a few minutes, in tonight's middle commercial, the Equitable Society will have a special message for listeners who agree with this philosophy. We will describe a special life insurance plan for men and women on the way up, offered by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Tonight's FBI file, The Baby Rental Racket. The Federal Bureau of Investigation has just completed its annual survey into the field of crime. This study covers the period from January 1st to the end of December 1948. It contains more statistics than we could bring you if we read you nothing else for the entire time allotted to the program. Let us give you two facts gathered from this current report. The first is... The Federal Bureau of Investigation received and analyzed more fingerprints of persons arrested during the year just passed than in any other year since the FBI was created. That means that the crime wave, which showed some sign of letting up, is now in the process of engulfing us and will, unless strong measures are taken and taken immediately. The other fact we bring you is from the crime report. Arrest records reflect that one out of every 20 persons in the United States has been arrested and fingerprinted, which means that the fingerprint arrest file now contains the names of an army of people, an army totaling more than 7 million. Tonight's file opens in an amusement park located on the outskirts of a large eastern city. It is early evening. A young woman approaches one of the concessions on the midway. Miss? Yeah? Does um, Gloria Butler work here? Uh-huh. Well, could I see her? Sure. Go right through that door. Oh, thanks. Hi, Gloria. Susie! Uh-huh. Well, gee, this is a surprise. Where have you been? Out of town. Oh, How'd you know I was working here? I asked around. Hey, what are you sitting way up there for? Oh, it's my job. To swing five feet off the ground in a chair? Uh-huh. What kind of a job is that? Did you see the customers throwing baseballs at the target when you were out front? Yeah. Well, when one of them hits the bullseye, I fall out of the chair and into that pool of water. You what? <gasps> Yeah. It's lots of fun. Oh, it must be. Now I go up again. Yeah. Uh, Gloria, you still got your baby? Oh, sure. How old is the kid now? Almost a year. That's just right. What's just right? The age. Just right for what? When are you finished? I get relieved in uh, 20 minutes. For how long? Half an hour. Good. I'll meet you as soon as you get off. Okay, where? Uh, next door at the beer garden. Okay. Whoa. I'll be there as soon as I change my clothes. Hey, Sue, is that your friend? Where? There, at the door. 
Oh, yeah. Mm, she looks moxy. What do you want, Mrs. Einstein? Hi, Gloria. Hello, Sue. I, uh, I'd like you to meet my husband. Fred, this is Gloria. It's a genuine pleasure. Well, nice to meet you. Sit down. Thanks. Sue tells me uh, you're married to George Butler. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I haven't seen George in quite a while. What's he doing now? Uh, three years. Oh, that's too bad. Fred, Gloria hasn't got much time. Uh, oh, oh, all right. Yeah, I guess we might as well get down to business. Gloria, how much do you make at the concession? Thirty-five a week and a new bathing suit every month. How would you like to make a hundred a week? A hundred? Uh-huh. Oh, gee, that'd be great. All you gotta do is lend us your kid. Lend him? Lend you, Junior? Yeah, you see, we've got a list of people who want to adopt a baby. You, you want me to sell Junior? Gloria, wait till Fred explains the whole thing. We take Junior to them, and they adopt him on approval. For that, they pay us $400. Uh-huh. Then we tell them if they decide they want to keep the baby after they've had it a week, it'll cost them another $400. Uh huh. When we go back after the week is up, though, we tell them that the price is $4,000, not $400, and we get the kid back. Oh, that'll never work. It's been working for two years. Huh? You've been doing this for two years? Yeah, that's right. Well, why don't you keep using the same kid? Well, we did, but he outgrew the part. Huh? Well, he got big and ugly, and nobody wanted him. Oh, what do you say, Gloria? How does the deal sound to you? Well, it sounds okay, but I'm just wondering... If... About what? Well, whether all that easy money is going to hurt my career. What, you mean dodging baseball? Look, you just go along with us, honey. We'll have you playing third base for the Giants. A few weeks later, at the FBI pistol range, Special Agent Jim Taylor is finishing his practice round when local policeman Earl Dawson approaches. Hi, nice shooting. Huh? Oh, hello, Earl. Hi, Jim. Didn't know I had an audience. Well, you're going over on the line, or you want to share this tag with me? I'll use this one. Okay. I'm glad you're here. Saves me a trip up to your office. Oh? What'd you want up there, Earl? Oh, I've been investigating a local racket. I want some help. What kind of a racket? It's a new one on me. It's the adoption by approval gimmick. I don't think I've run into that one. Well, the swindlers find a family that wants to adopt a baby. Well, there are plenty of those. Then they actually deliver a baby to the family and say they'll take care of the necessary adoption papers. Uh -huh. All that, of course, is done after the family makes a down payment. What happens then? Well, after the people get to like the child, the swindlers come and ask for a tremendous second payment. Oh, brother. That's even worse than the old black market racket. Uh, hey, you need some bullets, sir? Mm, oh, no, thanks. Okay. I suppose they pick families who couldn't possibly pay the second installment, so they'll be sure of getting the baby back. That's exactly what they do, Jim. Uh-huh. Have you gotten any lead at all on who's working this racket? Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got a complete description. From one of the victims? From a half a dozen of them. Oh. The descriptions we've gotten are all so similar, they must be right. Uh, here they are. Oh, fine, thanks. Uh... I tell you, Earl, I'll have Ident check on this and see if we have anything on him. Well, I've had to stop a couple of complainants from coming up to your office about this man to oh. press kidnapping charges. Well, we have no jurisdiction there. That's what I told him. Well, I think I'll get in some practice, Jim. Okay, Earl. Oh, and as soon as I get any answer from Ident, I'll get in touch with you. Come on, Junior. What, you want a bottle? All right, here. Here, take, take your bottle. Well, go ahead, Junior. Please. Oh, oh Sue? Yeah? Oh, come on in here, will you? Coming. Oh, don't ever leave me alone with the kids, Sue. I've asked you a million times. You wouldn't have so much trouble if you didn't try to feed it with one hand and read the racing form with the other. Now, don't change the subject. I've asked you not to leave me with the kid. I don't like kids. Now, here, take them. Okay, okay. Oh. Where have you been? To see Gloria. She sent for me. Why? She says she'd like to see Junior. What for? I don't know. Well, did you tell her we're taking good care of him? Sure. After all, he's worth more healthy. That's what I said. Well, you better dress the kid up real cute. I made an appointment for this afternoon. Another customer? Uh-huh. 
Well, Gloria's going to call me later. What'll I tell her? About what? About seeing the kid. Oh, oh. Uh, tell her to come up here next Friday. We'll have it back by then. Okay. Hey, look. What? Well, the kid spilled some milk on the name of a horse in the second race. Well? Maybe I should hook him up with everything in the first and then bet some doubles. Oh, fine. Well, look, maybe the kid knows Go something. get his blanket. Just let's worry about his health, not his handicapping. But... If he stays healthy, he'll win us more money than citation. Busy, Jim? Oh, hello, Earl. Now, come on in. Grab a chair, guy. Thanks. Say, uh, you know those pictures you got for me from Washington? On Fred Hamilton? Yeah, they were the right ones. Oh, swell. The last victim, a family named Jackson, identified him as the one who tried to swindle them. Uh Oh, Oh, uh, Earl, I learned that we've been looking for Hamilton ourselves for violation of the National Stolen Property Act. Well, that brings you in it, too. Yeah? Oh, uh, have you spoken to the latest victims? I spoke to Mr. Jackson. His wife wasn't up to being interviewed. Well, that's understandable. Hamilton gave Mr. Jackson a check to cash after the first payment. The check, which was on an out-of-state bank, was returned unpaid. Well, that's another count against him. Jim, uh, can I get a complete file on Hamilton? Sure, sure. Earl. If we haven't got it here in the office, Washington can send it along. Fine. Oh, uh, Earl, I'd like to have you do me a favor, if you Sure, will. name it. I'd like a list of the previous victims. After I've interviewed them, then we can go to work. <laughs> Where you been? Working. Gloria's here. Oh, hi, Gloria. Hi. She just told me she's been up to see her husband. Oh, how is he? Fine. She, uh, told him about our little business. He liked it, huh? Well, no. George says I should stick to my own profession. You mean he doesn't want you to work with us? Well, he says Junior's too young to be working. Gloria, did you tell him how good we were doing? Well, yeah, but he don't care. But you can't quit now, Gloria. We're just starting to get... Still, look. It's not me. It's George. He says it would be all right if Junior was learning something, but he ain't. Well, you go right back Sue, and... Sue, I think George is right. Huh? Well, he's entitled not to have his own kid working if he doesn't want to. But... Uh... If George wants to call it off, it's off. Oh, gee, I'm glad you ain't mad about this. Mad? Why should I be mad? You've got a right to quit if you want to. Now, look, Gloria, you go on home and I'll get Junior and bring him out to your house tonight, huh? Now, run along. Well, goodbye, Fred. Goodbye, Goodbye, Sue. goodbye, Gloria. Have you blown your top? Hmm? Here we just to start get this thing to going, and, and you get big-hearted and tell her we'll give her the kid back. Oh, relax. How can I? I'll explain the whole thing okay, to you. Okay, start explaining. I had to get rid of her. Why? We got trouble with the kid. What happened? Well, I went out to see Mr. and Mrs. Mason. I know, I, I know. Here. You said you were going. Well, like I always do, I said the second payment on the baby wasn't 400 but 4000 Yeah. Well, Mrs. Mason started to cry, and Mr. Mason Fred, asked her to stop. Fred, get to and... the point. Where is Junior? Mr. Mason gave me four Gs and really bought him. We will reopen tonight's FBI file in just a moment. Now, a special message to a very special kind of person. Last Tuesday was, as you remember, the last day for filing your income tax return. Perhaps as you sat at your desk filling out your form, this thought occurred to you. Two or three years from now, I'm going to be paying a tax on a far bigger income than this. I know I'm going to get ahead. I know I'm on the way up. If a thought like that entered your head, if you really have faith in your future success, then you're the man we'd like to talk to. Here at the Equitable Society, we have a life insurance plan that really speaks your language. It was designed for someone like you, for the man or woman on the way up. You'll understand why when you consider its three important features. First, immediate protection. The moment you sign the contract, you enjoy the peace of mind that comes from knowing that your wife and children have the protection they need. Second, the equitable plan provides for readjustments in the future. Five years from now, when you're making more money, you can make up your mind whether you want more protection or bigger cash values. Or you may decide to work out a retirement program. 
In other words, your life insurance keeps in step with your income. Third advantage, the equitable plan is flexible at all times. It can expand or contract as you see fit and offers you many desirable options, which your equitable society representative will be glad to explain to you. So why not get in touch with him? Phone him and ask for full details on the equitable plan for people on the way up. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Baby Rental Racket. Criminals who can bring themselves to perpetrate the crime enacted in tonight's case from the files of your FBI must be shabby people. It would, however, be a mistake to assume that their clothing would necessarily be shabby or that they would have any external sign that they were anything but decent, law-abiding citizens. It is unfortunate that criminals, even those with long records, do not necessarily show any result of their previous acts. One notorious swindler who had spent as much time in jail as out was able to pose as a doctor and to convince legitimate doctors that he was a bone surgeon of the first water. Many an ex-racketeer who grew up during the Prohibition era is now a sophisticated, easy-to-meet person who might deceive you into believing he was harmless and had put his criminal days behind him. No, there isn't any way to recognize the lawbreaker. For that reason... It is impossible to tell you any way to avoid contact with them, except for the obvious and the best way. If you receive any offer, any proposition, which on the face of it promises to bring you something a little more quickly than you expected, whether that be a baby or anything else, examine the offer very carefully. After doing that, if you have the slightest suspicion, pick up your phone and call your local police. Next file continues at the local FBI field office. Sorry I kept you waiting, Jim. Oh, that's all right, Earl. I waited around down at headquarters until the last possible minute, hoping we'd get some word on that Fred Hamilton alarm. We didn't get anything on it up here either. Oh, the SAC wants us to distribute pictures of Hamilton to the newspapers. Uh Uh-huh. You want to have the copies made or shall I? Well, you've got the originals. Why don't you have them made, huh? Okay. If that doesn't flush him out, I don't know what will. Oh, by the way, two more complaints came in just before I left headquarters. Uh Oh? From a family named King and one named Leonard. Uh, Oh, pardon me, Earl. Yeah. Sure, Jim. Special Agent Taylor speaking. Yes, just a moment, please, Earl. It's for you. Oh, thanks. Hello? Yeah, Bill. What's that? She is fine. Hold on to her. We'll be right down. So long. That was Bill Jordan down at headquarters. Oh, what did he want? They've just had a visitor down there. Hmm? Who? The mother of the baby Fred Hamilton was using. And she's ready to talk. Come on, let's get down there. Yes, dear. Put down the racing form. Honey, I blew a bet in the sixth race, and I'm trying to Look, figure out Look, the woman how... with the new kid is on her way up from the lobby. Well, what do you want me to do, dress formal? This is a new town with new suckers. We're going to have to nail her kid. Okay, okay. That must be her. I'll get it. Mrs. Drew? That's right. Oh, please come in. Oh, thanks. Fred? Hmm? This is Mrs. Drew. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Drew? How do you do? My wife tells me that she discussed this deal with you on the telephone. Yes, she told me I was going to get $50 a week for lending you my baby. That's right. But she didn't tell me why you won, Tommy. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Drew. I thought I did explain that. (laughs) No, you didn't. I do need this money very badly, but I... Well, I don't want to do anything that's wrong. Mrs. Drew, did you ever hear of Jackie Coogan... Of course. And Margaret O'Brien? Yes. And Freddie Bartholomew? Uh, The English boy. That's right. You think they were big stars? Why, certainly. Well, they were nothing compared to what your baby is going to be. I'm going to produce a picture called Baby Star. And your child is going to have the lead in it. 
How did you happen to pick my baby? Well, I have talent scouts all over the world. Uh-huh. And uh, don't worry about the starting salary. In a few years, your baby will be making a lot more than 50 a week. Oh, really? Mrs. Drew, how does 6000 a week sound to you? $6,000? Certainly. Gable gets it. No reason your son shouldn't. What do you say, Mrs. Drew? Well, I guess there's nothing I can do but accept your offer. And that's the whole story, Mrs. Butler. That's right, Mr. Taylor. You've left out nothing between the time Mrs. Hamilton approached you at the amusement park where you were working and right now. Oh, no, sir. You haven't told me yet how you found out that you had been swindled. Well, uh, I went to their apartment, and there was no answer. So I went back the next day, and there still wasn't. Well, when I couldn't even call them on the telephone, I figured there must be something wrong. I see. So I went to the people in the next apartment, and they said they saw Fred and Sue move out. And that's when you decided to go to the police? Yes, sir. Well, the local police and the FBI are making every effort to locate your baby, Mrs. Butler, but frankly, you don't deserve to have the child. I didn't know what I was doing. After what you've told me, that's a little hard to believe. Jim, we've located Mrs. Butler's child. Oh, oh Laura. thanks. Don't thank me. Thank the men in the 17th precinct. They found him. Where was he? With a family named Mason up in Hawthorne Avenue. That's right. They were on the list. What list is that? Well, Fred used to get the names of the people he sold the baby to off a list he had. Have you any idea where he got that list? No, sir. Could she give you any help, Jim? Well, some. One thing we know now is what Mrs. Hamilton looks like. Mrs. Bartley here gave me a complete description on her. Mm -hmm. That might come in handy. Earl, why don't you go out and interview the people who bought this baby the last time? All right, Jim. Meanwhile, I'll go over to the Hamilton's old apartment and see if I can find out there where they've gone. I hope you had better luck than I did, Jim. Couldn't the Masons give you anything, Earl? Oh, they might be able to in a couple of days, but not now. Oh, how come? Well, they're both pretty well along in years. This is a terrible shock to them. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Did you get anything at the apartment? I spoke to the same neighbor who told Mrs. Butler they saw the Hamiltons move out. They told me an express man picked up the Hamilton trunk. They shouldn't be too tough to trace then, Jim. Well, I checked at the express company. I found the trunk had been shipped to Centerville with instructions that it was to be held at the station until the Hamiltons picked it up. Maybe we can get them when they come to get it. It's too late for that, Earl. I called the railroad station in Centerville. It's already been claimed. Ah, too bad. And the apartment they lived in had already been rented, so there was no point in trying to find any clues there that might tell us where they went. Oh, pardon me, Earl. Mm -hmm. Special Agent Taylor speaking. Yes, that's right. You have? Good. Mm Mm-hmm. She was? When? What was her job there? Oh, uh, yes... Yes, that's a big help. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Earl, that was your ident section. Oh? I gave them Mrs. Hamilton's description. They checked on her. She has a record. She was arrested for stealing $2,000 from the Henderson Street Adoption Home. What was a woman like that doing at the adoption home? She was employed there as a clerk in the bookkeeper's office. And I've got a feeling that the money's not all she stole. All right, Earl, let's get out to the adoption home. Is this the block we want, Sue? I don't know. Wait till I take a look at the list. Uh, I know this is the right street, but I forget the number. I'll have it in a minute. Oh, quiet, baby. Just... A, A, A. Anderson, here it is. 7-Eleven Elm Drive. Yeah, well, that'll be right near the next corner. Oh, Sue, will you do something to make this kid stop crying? What can I do? We don't want the bottle. Well, try it again. All right. Here. Uh, you see? Ah, oh, you'll make some child a wonderful mother. Never mind the jokes. Oh, this is the place here. Now, you take the kid. Come on, Tony. Uh, hey. That's a good boy. Say, this is quite a joint the Andersons have. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't ask for more dough. Probably could have got a G. Oh, easy on the language. You're supposed to be the baby's nurse. Okay. Huh? Get that scratch sheet out of the kid's blanket. Uh, oh, oh. 
Is, uh, is this the Anderson residence? Yes, that's right. We've brought the baby. Yes, so I see. May we come in? No. Huh? I'm a special agent of the FBI. You're both under arrest. What? Well, do something, Fred. He will, Mrs. Hamilton. The first thing he'll do is return that baby wherever it belongs. Then we'll all go down to headquarters together. Fred and Sue Hamilton were turned over to local authorities and both were sentenced to long terms in a penitentiary. Special Agent Taylor's theory was that Mrs. Hamilton had stolen not only money from the Henderson Street Adoption Home, but also a list of prospective foster parents. Records at the home revealed a list containing the names of every one of the previous victims. Since those victims had successively been named Jackson, King, Leonard, and Mason... It became obvious that the Hamiltons worked the list in alphabetical order. For that reason, Special Agent Taylor stationed himself at the home of Mr. and Mrs. Anderson when he arrived in Centerville with what results you have already witnessed. In tonight's case, your FBI cooperated with a local law enforcement agency on what was almost entirely a local violation. Such cooperation is the general rule and not the exception. But for the most part... It is the local police who give their aid to a special agent, who help him close a file on a criminal who has violated a federal statute. For that cooperation, the Federal Bureau of Investigation takes this opportunity publicly to thank the local police throughout the nation for the help they have given special agents, and which, even as you hear this, they are continuing to give. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. But right now, I want to tell you an interesting fact every insurance man knows. It's this. The type of life insurance you buy shows the type of man you are. And the type of life insurance that appeals most strongly to men who are earmarked for future success is the Equitable Society's plan for men and women on the way up. By purchasing a plan like this, you make a promise to yourself that you are going to get ahead. So don't delay. Call your equitable representative soon and get the inside story of this unique plan that's geared for you men and women who have faith in yourselves. Or tonight, write care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. A story concerning one of the nation's prevalent law enforcement problems. Its subject, jewel theft. Its title, The Vanishing Blonde. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious. And any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Alice Backus, Joan Banks, Colleen Collins, Whitfield Connor, Jerry Hausner, and Leon Ledoux. This Is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Vanishing Blonde, on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs> 